In a world ruled by after-school boredom and unrestricted internet access, one game was king and stands the test of time. Mech Quest. I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I remember before I forget. Before I forget that. I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Before I forget that. Lie. What even classifies as a memory lane video anymore, I don't know. I, I, I guess we're doing this. We're doing it. We're doing it live. I'm sure this game brings back some fantastic memories for some of you. Created by Studio Atrix Entertainment, these folks were likely responsible for some part of your childhood putting out all these glorious games. But wait! Before we get any further into the video, I, uh, I notice you aren't subscribed. Is that is there something wrong? Why, why is that? Do you, do you, do you not like me? Is there, is there something wrong with me? Surely not. Subscribe now so you can brag to all your friends about being subbed to me when I only had 25 subs. Wow, so cool. Join the cult. Check out my other content and be sure to share it around if you like it. YouTube seems to hate giving me publicity. <laughs> Anyways, MechQuest was released on October 1st, 2007, after some stunning success of games like Dragon Fable and Adventure Quest. So, what exactly is MechQuest? Well, it's a turn-based sci-fi game based around building your own mech and fighting a plethora of enemies as you level up. You can choose tons of parts for each hand, shoulder, and head, giving you tons of slots to experiment with to find the best setup. As you level up in-game, you'll get access to bigger and better mechs, with all of their own base stats that grow the higher level you are. For example, you saw me rocking the Nubatron, which is a level 4 mech, but I've got it situated with some new weapons and a sick-ass paint job. There are tons of mechs as well. The variety and styling is actually incredible for a game of its time. There are some seriously cool choices given you have enough time to commit to grinding. Gameplay follows a pretty linear loop. You'll always be fighting something, whether it be in or out of your mech. Other than grinding the random fight mechanic for money and XP, you can join one of three university clubs. Each have their own unique mechs and items for the player to use. These clubs offer missions in the form of a minigame, the Labyrinth, where you have to go through and find a chest. Along the way, you'll be fighting more enemies and a special minotaur at the end. There are also jobs ranging from pizza delivery to being a police officer. Each has their own mission types and progression rewards. You could do every single job if you wanted to, but it's a lot of time commitment to progress. A lot of this game is grind-oriented, meaning you have to do the same thing over and over again to progress, which isn't an issue for some people, but it can get very repetitive at times. Other than the stuff that's offered on the main hub world, there are plenty of other planets, each with their own unique stories and missions to accomplish. Despite being a game from the early 2000s, there's a lot of content to explore here. But for those wondering if there's an easy way to level up, <laughs> Look no further. I got you. Number 6. Mikael Krosbergen is deep in a cave when he catches this incredibly large arachnid lurking on the stony gray wall. Killing this here spooky spider on campus is the easiest way to level up early game. This guy gives you a lot of XP and cash every time you kill him, but if you come here early like me, it's a bit of a chore. Basically, I needed to have an item called Gravitron Enforcer, which reduces enemy accuracy by 40%. Then I needed a head called Smiley Face, which has a small chance to stun on hit. Combine these two status effects, and it's possible for the spider to not be able to attack for two turns, allowing you to get in more damage. Aside from that, you have to pray that the spider boy doesn't use the sticky web stun, and you should be good. Lots of resetting in this fight, but it's easy capital if you can kill him. Aside from grinding, the actual story in this game is, well, uh, I'll be honest, it's a complete mystery to me. 
But there is one if you're interested. Once you hit certain levels, more story paths will open up to you, allowing you to progress to some of those mentioned planets. As much as I would like to say how good or bad the stories are in this game, I really couldn't tell you. But what I can tell you is there is a lot. I, I, like, a lot, a lot. So, to conclude, I mean, this game isn't complex, it's not groundbreaking, but it is impressive. The sheer amount of content in this game is really mind-boggling, given how everything is so simple on the surface. I know this is a shorter video than what I usually produce, but I, I don't think it's worth going over every nook and cranny of this game, simply because of how similar most of the content is. In 2020, this game is still great to kill time, or if you're bored and have nothing else to do. It's like Pokemon, but cooler, and there aren't any furries. Anyway guys, that's all for me. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content, and check out the rest of the channel. Thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.